It's called the New START Treaty. It comes as President Biden is in Poland at this hour, where he will deliver remarks very shortly, one day after his surprise visit to Ukraine, marking a year since Russia's brutal invasion began. Republican Congressman and National Guard Colonel Michael Waltz sits on the Armed Services Committee, and he's sitting for us this morning. Congressman, good morning to you. Hey, good to be with you. Thanks. Uh, so let's start with this uh, this headline. Moscow is suspending the New START nuclear weapons treaty, and they say uh, they must be ready to resume nuclear weapon testing if the United States does the same. That's not good. No, Steve, but it's uh, frankly, it's one of the only cards Putin has left. His conventional military has been completely decimated. Uh, so really all he has left is is strategic nuclear forces. Uh, the irony with the New START treaty is that President Trump and his administration wanted to negotiate a better treaty, uh, one that the Russians weren't cheating on so much uh, because they were cheating on the treaty left and right. And yet uh, we had a change in administration. Biden comes in and he just gives them a five year extension, getting nothing in return, which I think was one of many things, including the lack of response to colonial pipeline, the withdrawal from Afghanistan that led Putin to think he right. could get away with this uh, with this invasion. And then the bigger piece on the nuclear stage actually is China. China now has more ICBMs uh, than we do. Uh, they're looking to triple their arsenal in the next few years. Right. Uh, so that's where my concern is, uh, not so much Russia. Well, uh, the Russia new start treaty that uh, he's talking about suspending is the only thing we got with them. So that's the only piece of paper we've got with Vladimir Putin regarding those. But but regarding China, Congressman, uh, I believe one of the China's uh, top diplomats going to Russia today after uh, Putin's big speech. And they're going to be talking a little bit, presumably, about how can we, China, help you with your battle against Ukraine? And that's not good either. Oh, that, no, that's right. They're already helping uh, with non-lethal aid, with economic aid. Uh, their imports of Russian oil have increased over 50 percent. So everything that basically uh, Europe has walked away from, China and India have picked up the slack in terms of the Russian economy. So, so much for the, you know, the highly vaunted uh, sanctions that Putin I mean, excuse me, that Biden said would go in place on Putin. Uh, you know, those things, those things have more holes than Swiss cheese. Uh, and, and what I want to hear today in the speech, Steve, that Biden is going to give a couple of things. Number one, what is the policy of the United States and Europe towards China? Uh, uh, their foreign minister is in Moscow right now proposing a peace deal. Right. And then what does success look like uh, for the United States. It can't be a blank check uh, until Zelensky decides he wants to go to the bargaining table. I completely agree with the last part. Uh, and that's why we called you in, because you're an expert at all of this stuff. Congressman, thank you very much for joining us. Today. You've got something to add. Go ahead. And Steve, no, very quickly, the other thing I'd like to see today from Biden, there should be a one-for-one -one contribution from the Europeans. Uh, we've given over 100 billion. The yeah. next nearest European country is UK at 4 billion. Dollar for dollar, US and Europe going forward. Uh, they've got to carry their fair share. Indeed. All right, uh, Congressman, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we should hear from the president very shortly. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. You bet.